tell your neighbor, I'm rich. I'm rich. Oh, say it like you mean it, I'm rich. I'm rich. Now, before they start looking at your wallet and your pocketbook, let them know that rich, say rich, rich. Is, is an acronym. An acronym. It stands for, it stands for realizing, realizing I create, I create harvest, harvest or hardship. Hmm. I'm rich. I'm realizing I create harvest or hardship. Somebody say, teach me, pastor. Now, every time I read this, I get so excited. Starting the day, I need every believer to take God at his word. Amen. And that if he said it, you simply need to receive it and wait on it to manifest in your life. Amen. Now, Deuteronomy simply says that it shall be. Go back to verse 10. So it shall be. Not might be, not could be, not maybe. The Bible says that what we just read, it shall be. When the Lord brings you into the land which he swore your fathers. Now somebody say, well, Abraham's not my father. Well, you see, you don't understand. You got more than one father. You got your earthly father. You got your heavenly father. But then you got your generational biblical father, which, is, which goes by the name of Father Abraham. He is the father of many nations. And you and I are his sons and his daughters because God chose him to be a blessing to us. Then the blessing flowed from Abraham to Isaac. Isaac was blessed, and then Isaac passed the blessing down to Jacob. And I just got to tell you this, and this is early in my notes, but I'm, I'm going to preempt myself. You got to understand something, that the promises and the blessings of God are transferable from one generation to the next generation. It doesn't matter if your parents were poor. You've got another set of parents that were rich. Good God Almighty. But if you don't understand this, you'll start looking at where you come from and thinking that's all that's possible. God says, no, I promised it to Abraham. Amen. Then I promised it to Isaac and Jacob. He says to give you, and say, I like this, to give you. Yeah. Didn't say you had to work for it. Amen. He said, I'm going to give you large yes. and beautiful yes. cities. Yes. Okay, I don't know how you're not shouting. Wait a minute, Pastor, that, that can't mean literal cities. Yes. No, you don't understand that we are supposed to have dominion and authority over entire cities. Amen, somebody? Why? Because God says he's going to give it to us and we don't have to build it. Then he says he's going to give you houses. See, I shot it right there. I shot it right. Some of y'all trying to get a house. God said, I, I intended for you to have houses with an S on it. But hold up, free. It's good to see you this morning. Listen, God said, I never intended for you to live in an empty house. What are you doing, Pastor? I'm recalibrating your expectations so you know what you're supposed to have from God. God say, I'm going to give you a house and I'm going to fill it with good things. It's going to be so full with stuff you didn't fill it with. Then he says, I'm going to hewn you out some wells. Now, I know y'all don't get excited about this right here, but I'll, I'll tell you why you should. Wells you did not dig. Okay, vineyards and olives, trees, which you did not plant. Okay, the reason why you're not excited because you have failed to recognize that what God is describing is multiple streams of income. See, if you were in the old Bible days and I stood up and preached this in the old Bible days, you would have fell out and then lost your wig and it just rolled on the floor somewhere, man. Because listen, if you got vineyards, you got something you can sell for another stream of income. Keep this. If you've got wells, then somebody got to pay you to buy your water. Another stream. See, I'm trying to make this church understand your job is never going to be enough to get you where you want to be in life. Well, pastor, what is my job? Your job is your jump off point. Your job, watch this, your job, only purpose is to give you a seed so you can sow something that'll change your situation. God says, I'm going to do all this for you. But listen, verse 12, this is how I know the devil don't want me to preach this. God said that when I bless you the way I'm going to bless you. He says, you're going to have a challenge. You're going to be so blessed. You're going to have so many toys to play with. Oh, I'm not talking about no Legos. I'm talking about you're going to have so many places you can go. You're going to have so much money you can spend that God says, I need to remind you to be careful that you don't forget about me. Good God Almighty. Can I tell you that's the reason why a lot of people don't ever get blessed? You forget about God when you get your income tax check. 
Papa. Oh, don't let them give you a 25 cent raise on your job. Totally forget about God. See, here's what I'm teaching you today. God will test you to see if he can continue to invest in you. This is why he said, if you'll be faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler. Can I go deeper? Deuteronomy 11, 21. I got so much ground to cover. Deuteronomy 11, 21. Get what you can. Because it's going to be a lot today. You got it? Let me read, you follow me, that your days huh, and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them. Like the days of the heavens, oh, this is so good, and the days above the earth. Hold your seat. Major revelation about to come out of, my, out of my mouth. I hope you can catch it. God wants you to live on earth like he's living in heaven. I'll wait. I'll wait. Folks, this is 25 years of research. This is 25 years of trial and ever. Wait a minute, Pastor. No, no, I, you didn't just say God want me to live on earth like he living in heaven. I promise you, he did. You got any word for that, Pastor? Sure. Think about the Garden of Eden. Travel with me. See, we're reading the scriptures, but we're not understanding the scriptures. Think about the Garden of Eden. Do you not recognize that the Garden of Eden, watch this, was earth being copied to look just like heaven. Ah. See, God wanted Adam and Eve, I wish I had somebody could go with me early, to live on earth like he was living. Okay, okay, this is all right, this is all right. I'm built for this. Our Father. I love you, girl. Me and my baby on one spirit. Our Father, which art in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Then there's a part that says, as it is, let it be whatsoever you bind on earth. God said, I'm going to bind the same then God said, whatever you loose on earth, I'm going to be loosing that thing up in heaven. Why would God be binding and loosing what I bind and loose on earth if earth was not supposed to be a duplication of heaven? Oh, you're going to love this. God says, if you'll handle your end, I'll handle my Now, I'm here to tell you, God handles his end. But you and I have not handled, well, no, no, you have not handled your end. I can't be in that, amen? I, I can't be in that. You have not handled your end, but I'm going to teach you how to handle your end because if you will bind it on earth, God says, I'll bind it in heaven. Poverty has to be bound. Mm. Debt has to be bound. And listen, I don't care if you cause the debt. I don't care if you're in debt because of you, you were foolish, you were, you're in debt because you overspent. I'm here to tell you that when you know better, you can do better. When you do better, you will have better. So ain't no need of crying, ain't no need of weeping, ain't no need of talking about where I got myself in a hole and I can't get out. You can get out. Today we get out. Mm, can I go deeper? I dare somebody say, I'm rich. Say, I'm starting to realize. I create. Harvest. Or oh, hardship. How many of y'all saved in here today already? Already saved. Ooh, I like y'all. Well, this is just for y'all that are saved. If you ain't saved, get saved. If I wouldn't save, you know what I would do today? I'd get saved today. Because nothing I'm preaching gonna help you if you ain't saved. Ain't but one word for the sinner, get saved. But for all y'all believers, you've been living beneath your privileges long enough. The devil has your stuff long enough. It's time for the believers to rise up. It's time for the believers to take back what is ours. Why? So we can do the kingdom work that God saved us to do on this planet. After salvation, you are not supposed to live in lack of poverty. And I got to say that one more time. After salvation, God did not intend for believers to live in lack of poverty. Why? Because we're supposed to represent heaven. We're supposed to be in a, in a, in a, in a, an advertisement for people who aren't saved. 
people should look at you and want to come to your church. The reason why some of you struggle getting people to come to your church, they don't see nothing worth following. You can show them all my videos. Oh, your pastor's off the chain. But they know you better than they know me. See, some of y'all just need to get your life just a, huh, just clean up a little bit. Pastor, why would I do that? I'll tell you why I do it, because God pays for advertisement. That's all right, I'm, I'm good today. What do you mean? The more people you bring to Christ, the more God will bless your life. Okay, you don't believe that the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Don't nothing give God more joy than seeing people come to him and surrender their lives. When's the last time you brought somebody to Jesus? When's the last time you brought somebody to church? Not so that you could win $50, but so that you could get God's blessing. Now don't get it twisted, get your $50 too. We gave it to get your $50, but beyond the $50, God will do things that whoo, can't nobody do but God. Somebody say, after salvation, I'm supposed to live the abundant life. Some of you still won't say, you sit there like you got rocks in your jaws because you've been brainwashed to think that poverty and God go together. Here's what John 10 and 10 said, argue with this. The thief comes, oh, I love you today, Father. I say the thief comes, Julius. And he comes only in order to steal, kill. Jesus said, I came. <laughs> Not that the pastor might have him. That, that they all might have life, peep this, and that they may have it and enjoy life. How many believers you know ain't enjoying life? And they're gonna have life in abundance to the full? Till it overflows. See, we done got it twisted. We got God looking like the devil, and we got the devil looking like God. Why you say that, Pastor? Because the Bible say the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. But if you look at a lot of believers, look like God killing them and God stealing from them and God destroying them. You ought to look better after salvation, not worse. After you get saved, comb your hair. Yeah. Dress like you going somewhere. Mm -hmm. Act like you somebody. Yeah. Well, my situation ain't changed. Let me tell you something. Your mind got to change for your situation change. Can I go deeper? Matthew 19 and 26. I told you, we moving today. Matthew 19 and 26. Peep this. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, oh, hold my mule, with men, what Pastor Troy is preaching is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Okay, hold you see me. How many things are possible with men? Men, how many things are possible with men? How many things are possible with God? Let me ask you a question, who you with? I'm trying to show you this oxymoron that we've got to settle in our spirit and not accept it any longer. Because I am with God, then all things are possible, and I should never be talking about nothing is impossible if I'm walking with a God that makes all things possible. If you're a born again believer, you are with God. And, and the, last time I, the last time I said everything with God be blessed. Everything with God be blessed. I wish you read your Bible, everything with God be blessed. Why? Because God can't help but bless everything in his presence. That's why he had to get the devil out of heaven. You ever ask yourself why God didn't let him stay, why God didn't forgive him and give him a second chance? See, here's what you got to learn. Some of you need to repent. The minute you try to use your power over God, God says you got to go. And a lot of you believers are trying to become wealthy without using God's formula. Oh, you see, I'm good. I was built for this. 
Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. There is another way to get wealth. There's another way to be prosperous. But the Bible says the wealth of God brings no sorrow. See, all this wealth that y'all trying to get going to get you locked up in jail, going to get your brains blowed out. It's quiet in here now. Some of my dope boys in here sitting on, sitting on 100,000 right now. I'm so glad you're here today. Oh, my dope boys, they, they got racks on racks on racks. They in here. Got a wall like that with a rubber band on it. They in here. But they can't sleep at night. They in here. Ain't really got no peace in their life. Because every time they hear some sirens, they... Every time they drive by the police, they're looking in that mirror. How you know, Pastor? Don't worry about that. When you riding dirty and when you living dirty, it's hard to relax. Amen, somebody? What I'm telling you is God's got a way for us to get it and be at peace about it because the blessings of God added no sorrow to your life. One of my young men told me this week, and it blessed my life. One of my teenage young brothers said, Pastor, I want to thank you for your testimonies. I want to thank you for sharing how God is blessing you because you have inspired me because I thought that the only way I could make it in this life and have some money was to sell drugs. But he says, when I listen to you and I watch you, I'm starting to recognize I ain't got to sell. He should have never told me that. When he told me that, I made, up, I made it up in my mind that I don't care how ugly y'all look when I give my testimonies, I'm going to keep on giving my testimonies. But y'all be looking real ugly sometimes. Hmm. Can I go deeper? Now, how many of y'all are starting to embrace that God wants you to have some stuff? Let me break this down for you. There are three stops on the road to being rich and wealthy because of God's principles. Three stops. You about to recognize where you are because you don't, you don't know how to get where you're trying to get to. You recognize where you are. And some of you have fooled yourself to make you think you somewhere that you're not. Let me help you understand where you are. Stop number one. In Egypt, you have not enough. In Egypt, you have not enough. Exodus 1, the children of Israel are in slavery and they do not have enough. Why? Because they are in Egypt. Number two, in the wilderness, this is good teaching, you have just enough. Exodus, the 16th chapter, when they got hungry, God gave them manna. God gave them a substance for them to eat, but he only gave them their daily bread enough for the day. Oh, I'm preaching good. I don't care what y'all say today. And some of y'all are in one of these two places. You're either in the land of not enough, work two and three jobs and still can't pay your bills. Land of not enough. Oh, it's quiet. Don't, don't shout me down. Let somebody say land of not enough. Then there's a land of just enough. Now I'll tell you why the land of just enough can be dangerous. Because the land of just enough will make you think you got it going on. The land of just enough will make you think you have arrived and you don't realize that you have not arrived if you can't help nobody else get where you are. Hold oh, your seat, hold oh, your seat. The land of just enough, I have you singing, I'm living my best life. That's, that's, the, that's the theme song for the land of just enough. Don't look at me like that. Pastor, why is that the theme song for the land of just enough? Because if you're living your best life right now, you're telling everybody your life ain't going to get no better. I wouldn't even sing that song. I ain't living my best life. I, I do modify the song. But when they come to the hook, I just modify it to fit my situation. When they hear that part, I say, I'm living my best life thus far. I ain't going back and forth with you Christians. All right, amen, somebody. I'm living my best life thus far. Why you say thus far? Oh, baby, because we just getting started. I wish I had a church in here. You ain't seen nothing yet. But it's the best life thus far because I know that God's got more in store for me. Tell your neighbor, God's got more in store for you. Somebody say number one. Not enough. This is good. Number two. Just enough. But folks, when you get to the promised land, huh? 
When you get to Canaan land, then you will have more than enough. Deuteronomy 26 chapter. Now, very few of you in this room are at the land of more than enough. Go ahead, don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. Pastor, how you gonna tell me how way I'm at? Nah, just trust me, I know. Don't be discouraged though. Know that the best is yet to come. What you gotta make sure you do is two things. Make sure you don't go back and make sure you don't stay where you at. Ah. God, this is good. Somebody say, I'm rich. I'm, rich. I'm, realizing, I'm realizing I create, I create harvest, harvest and hardship. And Come here, Job. I'm going to teach today, y'all. Come here, Job. Bring me your 22. Job got a 22 with 28 bullets in it. Job said this. Thou shalt also, oh, they don't believe your word, God. They don't believe your word like I do. Thou shalt also decree a thing. <laughs> God says you'll decree a thing and because you are properly connected with me, not just operating in knowledge, but now operating in understanding, that when you decree a thing, it shall be established unto me. That's all right. You ain't got, listen, you just got to hear this. Notice it didn't say unto them. Because God is not going to limit you if you can't get your neighbor to be in agreement. Good God Almighty. No, sir. No, ma'am. God's not going to limit you if you're the only person on your road that's going to believe this message. God will pick you and bring you up right out of that road and everybody else will be in the same place this time next year. God says, you'll decree a thing and I, it shall be established unto thee. Peep this. And then something amazing happens. And then the light <laughs> shall shine upon. Oh, I wish I had somebody felt a brother early. Why should I get excited about that, Pastor? You, knew, you do know that darkness and debt go hand in hand. How many times have you been broke, looked at your paycheck and your bills and said, I can't see my way out? Sound familiar? How many times have you gone through a rock in a hard place and you say, man, I don't know how I'm gonna make it. The reason why you can't see your way out and you don't know how you're gonna make it is because darkness is blinding you. But if you can start decreeing some things, and I know y'all don't like this because it's just, it's just y'all just saying stuff that ain't true. Y'all just talking. The Bible said death and life is in the power of my mouth. The Bible told every one of us, call those things that are not as though they be. If you would learn how to articulate, you could matriculate. Good God about it. You have what you have said. You have what you have said. I don't never have enough money. That's y'all talking. Oh, the economy is getting tough. Oh, I don't know how we're going to make it. Really? Don't you know that when hard times hit, God takes care of his people? Come here, David. David said, I once was young, but now I'm old. I never seen the righteous. This is why it pays to live right. I never seen the righteous forsaken. I never seen God. People have to beg for. You shouldn't be begging nobody for nothing. As a matter of fact, there's a blessing of the Lord that will allow you to never ever have to borrow again. The Franklin Loan Company they don't want you to get this revelation. Mm-hmm. Aaron Rent the Own don't want you to get this revelation. It's so quiet in here now. Rooms to go don't want you to get this revelation. Because if you get this revelation, you'll get a house to go and not a room to go. That's all right. Pastor, that, that sounds real good, but, 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 but are, are you walking in any of that? I'm walking in it so deep, sometimes it gets scary. It gets scary. I just told one of my brothers, I say, man, what God is doing in my life from the top to the bottom, to the left, to the right, I feel like I'm living in the matrix. I feel like I'm living in the matrix, man, because it seems like I'm living a dream. When your wife looks at you, 
and says, we have come a long way, baby. When your wife tell you that, somebody that remembers the struggle. See, what y'all need to do is y'all got to stop jumping in and stop jumping out. Then when you get your head bust onto the white meat, you want to jump back in. Job said, thou shalt decree a thing. And if you can believe it, when it comes out of your mouth, God said, I will establish it unto you and then I'll let the light shine upon thy ways. Somebody say, I'm starting to realize that I create a harvest or a hardship. Here's what I'm showing you, God is generous. Here's how generous God is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You mean to tell me he'll give us Jesus and won't give us? Somebody gonna get it. We have cheated ourselves. He doesn't have anything that's worth more than Jesus. So if he gave us his best, why would he give us anything less? You just can't believe for it. Oh, I'm teaching today. Gave Abraham flocks and herds, gave Abraham silver and gold. Hold your seat, some of y'all gonna receive this, some of you gonna reject it, but it's up to you. Gave Abraham male and female servants. Help them hold their ghosts. See, you don't, you don't realize your birthright, when you got saved, God gave you more than just salvation and you settle for being saved and struggling, not me. You settle for being saved and going to a job you hate every day, not me. You settle for being saved and can't take a vacation, not me. The same faith that gets you saved is the same faith that gets you paid. Somebody gotta teach us. It's the same faith, folks. There ain't no different brand of faith. But see, it's easy for you to believe. Here's, thank you, Holy Spirit. You are an awesome assistant today. You are able to use your faith to acquire salvation because you saw somebody else do it. And you saw somebody else do it and you believe that they received it by faith. So you do what they did to get what they have because you believe they have it. This is why the body of Christ cannot remain poor because somebody's got to see that our God is an awesome God that will bless us and take care of us. Because what has happened, we got generation after generation after generation that just get saved, but they still remain a slave to poverty. Help them, Holy Ghost. I'm teaching you about harvest. See, a lot of you have caused your own hardship. from marriages to just dating to relationships. Don't, don't just limit this to money. Although I am predominantly speaking about money, don't limit it to money because whatever you have in your life, you've created it. Poverty is a harvest that you created. Relationships not working out right, I promise you, is something that you have created. Either it's something you're doing or something you're allowing. I'm, I'm preaching all over the place. Who am I talking to today? See, the way God blessed Abraham is the way God wants to bless me. I need y'all to get that in your spirit. Ah. Romans 2 and 11. Y'all know about 7 and 11. Gets 2 and 11. Romans 2 and 11. All I'm, all I'm doing this month is teaching you God's word because that's the thing that's keeping you from getting God's wealth. God says it's in there. I'm no respecter of person. In other words, God says anything I've ever done for anybody else, I want to do it for you. I want to do it for you. But you got to have the same kind of faith that they had to receive it. 
Can I go a little deeper? I got two minutes left. Hebrews 11 and one, a scripture we know, but we don't understand. Amplified version says, now faith is the assurance, which is the title deed, which is the confirmation of things hoped for. Y'all got to see this in the Amplified Version. Divinely guaranteed and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is what? The assurance. Faith is, get this in your spirit. Faith is the title deed. Okay, so you're not clapping. You, you're, not, you're not clapping because you're used to making payments. That's why you're not clapping. You're not clapping because you don't know what it's like to have the title deed to a car. And the minute you do, you take it down to the pawn place. Amen. So they can give you a few dollars. Then you mess around and don't pay them back. Oh, somebody know what I'm preaching today. Ain't that so? They come and take it. You talking about look at what the devil did. No, look at what you did. At the age of 50, I've probably had seven or eight, right past this, seven or eight title deeds. At the age of 50. I'm not bragging or boasting. If you don't see that it's possible, you won't believe that it's possible. There are four now at the house. Amen. Some of you are not clapping because you don't understand how important this is. When you have the title deed to something, yes. preach Holy Ghost. Can't nobody. I'm going to jump off this stage, man. Tammy, can't nobody. Somebody know I'm telling the truth. Can't nobody take it from you. Nobody. Woo! Nobody. Why? Because you have paid everything that was owed on it and it officially belongs to you. God said, Freedom Church, y'all got to get this. You don't, see, you haven't recognized what kind of power you got. God says your faith is your title deed. You looking at your paycheck, you looking at your job, you looking at everything else. God says, I've given you everything you need to possess everything I've already given you. Good God Almighty. So that when you make your move to get that which belongs to you, you have to say, hey, I'm coming with my title deed, God. Okay, some of y'all know, some of y'all still not, not trying to get on this train. Everything you need, God has already provided. Would you say amen to that? Okay, this one, I'm built for this. Okay, let me ask you a question. Has healing already been provided? Yes. The Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus, watch this. You, how do we get healed? We show up with faith, our title deed, and say, hey God, these folks talking about I got cancer, but I got a title deed that says I own healing. Hold your seat, hold your seat, hold your seat, hold your seat, I'm gonna bless y'all. Healing is not something that you receive. Healing is something that you own. Some of y'all gonna thank me for this. We've been taught to pray for healing. You don't pray for something you already have. Think, 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 think. Lord, give me healing. Lord, heal my body. You're talking wrong. That's why you're not really receiving. If you already have it, then you have to declare with your mouth. By his stripes, I am How? Because healing belongs to me. How? I got the title deed. What title deed? Hey. Okay, hold your seat. Hold your seat. Hold your seat. Without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. Without the title deed, it's impossible to please the Lord. God is looking to see what you got a title deed on today. I got a title deed on healing. That's how I got up out of my hospital bed. I got a title deed on finances. That's how I got out of poverty. And that's how I can travel anywhere in the world I want to travel right now. God says your faith is your title deed. 